light like dark, dark darkness, light light heart, dark light? Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show where we are behind on everything. I'm your host, Zach Center, and today's Trendy Tuesday. You new around here? It's Tuesday. I'm an idiot and didn't get this put out yesterday. This is supposed to be a Monday Nostalgia episode, even though I've never played Kingdom Hearts until this last week, but now it's going to be a Trinity Tuesday episode because Kingdom Hearts 3 just came out. Boom. I never played Kingdom Hearts as a kid. In fact, I just played through the entire thing last night. So why is this on Monday Nostalgia? Well, because I didn't get this episode out last Wednesday like I was trying to, but also because Kingdom Hearts has Disney characters in it, and it screams of nostalgia for me, even if I did just touch the game for the first time ever in my life. Also, even if I didn't own Kingdom Hearts as a kid or didn't get the chance to play it, I didn't even have a console in which to play it on, I used to get a lot of books from a lot of like random people when I was a kid. My, my mother would like have friends that would give us like old books they were trying to get rid of. And this, this is one of these books. What is this? It's a Kingdom Hearts 2 manual. Uh, so I've looked through this book a lot. I've read bits and pieces of it. I was like, yo, that looks really dope. But I never got a chance to play it because I didn't own the game. Anyways, Kingdom Hearts 3 just released and since I know nothing about this franchise other than it's Disney and Final Fantasy and everybody f***ing loves it, I decided to sit down and play through the entirety of the first entry in the series and let me tell you, I get it now. I, I completely understand why everybody loves this. Kingdom Hearts released in 2002 for the PlayStation 2. I played the remastered PS4 version though. The story follows a boy named Sora and his friends Riku and Kairi. They live on an island called Destiny Island and one day they decide to take a trip on a raft so that they can go on an adventure. But unfortunately some shit happens that causes them to be sent into another world. That's right, Kingdom Hearts is an isekai, bitch. Sora ends up being a hero of a prophecy where he wields this keyblade a powerful weapon and key that locks things and unlocks things, it's a key. With this power, he ventures out to other worlds with the help of Donald Duck and Goofy. Yes, I know. More on that in a bit. Riku ends up being an edgy teenager pushed onto the path of darkness because he's jealous of Sora and his new friends, Goofy and Donald. Again, we'll get to that in a bit. And Kairi gets the short end of the stick because she pretty much has no character and is really just a girl that Sora and Riku like. But because Sora is the main protagonist, showing up with him in the in, in the end probably. Um, oh, she also got her heart stolen, so that that's also short end of the stick right there. And all this paves the way for Sora to meet the Disney characters Donald and Goofy as they search for his friends, King Mickey Mouse and travel to other different worlds in, in the Disneyland to lock away the keyholes and save the multiverse. And that's about the entirety of the story that I'm going to explain. The story does get a bit complicated, especially in the later entries, by my understanding. We're not here to discuss the story in depth. There's plenty of other videos that'll do that. I will say though, if you're gonna play Kingdom Hearts, you better buckle up and get ready to watch a lot of cutscenes. Like four and a half hours of cutscenes. They're good though, so I, I actually really enjoyed the story here and I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of it plays out. But when I play a game, I play it for the gameplay. You can have a great story, but if it's not fun to play, then it's not worth my time. And for the most part, I'm happy to say that Kingdom Hearts 1 is really fun to play. I love the hack and slash action aspect of it. It can feel a bit slow at first, but once you get a little bit through the game, you start to understand the speed and the control of the character, and it's very solid. You get to mix up the Keyblade attacks with a different magic system. Towards the end of the game, I really only use like my ability to heal and make a shield. But at the beginning of the game, I used the magic a lot. It was very useful to kill bigger enemies quicker. I also love the RPG mechanics that are implemented. There's an entire AP system that gives you additional functions like combo attacks, treasure bonuses, and other similar systems and upgrades. You do level up like a traditional RPG with Donald and Goofy also getting level up bonuses the more you play. 
But one thing that I really appreciated about Kingdom Hearts and its RPG system is that I never felt like I needed to grind. I hate grinding in RPGs, and that's probably one of the reasons why I don't play RPGs as much as I would like to, but I ended up beating this game without ever once grinding. Even though I was like level 51 by the end of the game, I did do like all the major side quests or most of the major side quests before I beat the game, so that helped my level a little bit, but I still think I was probably a little bit under leveled at the end, but it didn't matter because it was, it was challenging without being impossible, and that was really nice. Later enemies were tough, a couple of bosses were also tough, and at times I would have liked a little bit more health, but I never felt burdened by it. Its action mechanics allow you to learn the patterns of the bosses and the enemies and get better at the game without needing to grind your way through levels. It's, it's really nice. It's one of the reasons I like games like Dark Souls, because it doesn't have that RPG mechanics in it, but you're able to learn the game and get better without really needing to level up. I will say that I am going to have to grind a bit if I want to beat the secret boss Sephiroth. I did jump into his fight before I beat the game, and uh, I got one hit killed. So uh, there's some work to be done, boys. But the final boss fights were pretty solid. Some of them were really fun. A couple of them were really dumb. At the end of the day, though, I didn't really have that much trouble with them. The gameplay also does a good job of being varied without being too varied. Each Disney World has you travel into some unique level design choices that allow you to do certain things different than other worlds. The Alice in Wonderland stage has a potion that turns you big and small. The Tarzan stage has vines you can jump onto. Neverland lets you fly. Each world is full of its own surprises. But with that being said, there are a couple of worlds that I really, really dislike. So here's my list of every single world in Kingdom Hearts from worst to best as quickly as possible. Number 13, Atlantica. Atlantica is shit. The swimming controls are awful. Both versions of the Ursula fight are awful. I didn't explore any of the area nearly at all because I hated everything about it. I just, I hate this level so much. Number 12, Destiny Island. Destiny Island is the first area of the game and if I hadn't promised people on Twitter that I was gonna play through this entire game, I would have quit at the very beginning. Why the hell would you start a 30 hour awesome video game with incredibly boring and dumb fetch quests right after you destroy a few enemies in the tutorial? I don't want to find coconuts, Kyrie. I want to fight big mother like this guy. Number 11, Monstro. Monstro was dumb. After I just did some side quests and I'm ready for the next world, I get swallowed by a well. Every room in this area looks the exact same. The only good thing to come out of this was a bigger jump. Number 10, Deep Jungle. I would have liked this one more if it wasn't backtracking galore. Climb up the trees, climb down the trees, climb up the trees, climb down the trees. Please stop. Oh, but I will say the deep jungle music really, really f***ing dope. Number nine, Neverland. Neverland was fine. You're on a boat most of the time, but the boss fight gives you the ability to fly. So that's really dope. Number eight, end of the world. I thought end of the world was a good ending to the game. It's a bit repetitive, but it could have been a lot worse. Number seven, Olympus Coliseum. Technically, all you do is fight a bunch of tournament in the Coliseum, but for the most part, it's really fun, and I love some of the fights here. Except for Hercules. That was stupid. You're stupid! Number six, Wonderland. Wonderland is higher up because I love the movie, but it also has some really cool perspective switches that are a bit trippy. I wish the game leaned in more on the weirdness of Alice in Wonderland and also had more characters from the movie, but as a first main world, it's pretty solid. Number five, Hollow Bastion. I think Hollow Bastion is pretty good. It's definitely a challenging penultimate world with some cool fights and some really good music. You also get to fight alongside the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, another one of my favorite Disney movies. Number four, Agrabah. For the most part, Agrabah is just fine, but it's got some cool exploration moments and I really like the Cave of Wonders. Number three, Halloween Town. I have no nostalgia for Nightmare Before Christmas. In fact, I remember not liking the movie for some reason as a kid, and I haven't seen it since, so I need to revisit it. But I really like the aesthetic of this world, and even though the boss fight here is a little wacky, it's an interesting mechanic that I ended up really liking. Number two, Traverse Town. Traverse Town is the main hub that you go through throughout the entire game. It has a lot going on, which is why it's so high up on this list. There wasn't anything that I disliked about it, and it also houses my number one favorite world. Number one, Motherf***er 100 Acre Woods. Let me tell you something. 
I thought this was going to be dumb, but then I walked into this book and I saw Winnie the Pooh talking about being sad and his friends were all gone and I teared up a bit. I'm not going to lie. This music is great. The mini games are, they're fine, but it's the story here that I really enjoyed because it's just heartwarming and you're not a real man if you don't smile throughout this entire section. The crazy thing is that I think Kingdom Hearts would be a good game on its own. The enemy designs are really dope. The gameplay is really fun. The story is wacky, but that's what makes it fun. The boss fights are, for the most part, extremely engaging, but when you pair that up with the world of Disney and Final Fantasy, I guess, it makes you interested in the characters from the very beginning. Even if you do have some dumb scene like this, when you first see Donald and Goofy, you instantly start to smile. Every new world, even Atlantica at first, was like jabbing a heroin needle in your arm and getting a fix of that good, good nostalgia. And honestly, that's the biggest reason why I really enjoyed this game. I loved waiting to see what the next Disney World was going to be, which other Disney characters would show up and join my party. Hearing most of the original voice actors from the Disney movies just brought back childhood memories and it makes me want to go re-watch like, all of these Disney movies because I haven't seen them in years. And while I am looking forward to playing the next games in its series for its gameplay and story, I'm mostly looking forward to seeing what other Disney worlds await. But before I go on any further, because there is a lot that I could talk about, I do want to say, if you haven't played Kingdom Hearts yet, you should definitely give it a chance. I know that the first couple hours are a bit drawn out and not really that interesting, but once you get over that hump, this is definitely a game that you should play. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Humble Bundle Monthly. We all want brand new games at a cheap price without doing any work. Well. There's never been an easier way than with Humble Bundle Monthly. On the first Friday of every month, you'll get a brand new bundle of great games to add to your Steam library for only $12. Last month, subscribers got Just Cause 3, Project Cars 2, and 7 other games. With Humble Monthly, you also get access to the Humble Trove with over 60 other DRM-free games you can download straight to your computer and play anytime, as well as an extra 10% off on the rest of the Humble store as long as you're subscribed. By the way, they just introduced Nintendo games here, so 10% off Nintendo games equals a win-win for me. There's four different options to subscribe. You can either choose the traditional $12 a month, but if you decide to sign up for three months at a time, you can save an extra $1. If you sign up for six months at a time, you can save an extra $5. And if you decide to sign up for the entirety of the next year, you can get an entire month for free. If you subscribe right now, you can go ahead and unlock the February bundle with Yakuza 0, Tom Clancy's The Division, and Rapture Rejects, with more on the way soon. But hurry up, because this offer ends on February 1st, with a new batch of games taking its place for March. Check out the details in the link below, and if you decide to sign up, you'll also be supporting your everyday nerd. And that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for whatever reason you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button. I will be continuing the Kingdom Hearts series and covering them on Your Everyday Nerd within like the next year. So look forward to Chain of Memories being the next one in the next month or so. I actually won't be playing every game in the series because there are some of them that are playable on the remastered version that I have. But I will be watching all of the cutscenes and so I'll just review those games like movies. Hopefully I can get to Kingdom Hearts 3 by the end of the year. That'd be really dope. I'd love to get caught up that way, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.